Hi everyone and welcome back to another card making video. Today I will be using one of my favorite stamp sets from the latest My Favorite Things release and this is the Birthday Buds. I will use just this stamp set and uh, pretty much the same design to create three different birthday cards and for all my coloring today I decided to use my Arteza watercolor pencils. I have here the 120 pencil set it comes in a tin, it has a lovely quality and they work beautifully if you are using good quality watercolor paper. Their price is great and although I have the bigger set, you can get the 72 set where you get tons and tons of colors again for less than $30. I'm going to use this pencil today on watercolor paper. I have a, pad, a new pad that I haven't used before, which is again by Arteza. This is 32 papers inside the pad. There were actually two in a pack and uh, so you get all together 64 pages and uh, the price is really good, it's less than uh, $25. It has a guarantee here that uh, if it doesn't perform good with your mediums then you can just let them know. I'm using the expert quality here, it is uh, 9 by 12 inches and it's 140 pounds which is nice and thick. I am planning to use some of these pages to create my disc bound journals, but I will do that on another video. So for today I'm going to start stamping. Now this watercolor paper has two sides. One of them is quite smooth so you can do your stamping there if you like. The other one is more textured. However, I decided to work on the textured side today just to see how my pencils perform on that side. Now remember that I am not an expert when it comes to watercoloring, I just use different mediums for coloring in my cards as well as in my art journal and for what I do I find that they perform beautifully. So here you can see I am applying a few colors on uh, this paper and I am going to move them with water. It is really easy to move them, the more water you add the more you will be able to move the color and blend it out. The brush that I'm using here is uh, thirsty, so it is wet but it's not soaking wet. Now if you are interested in these markers or in any other product by Arteza, I do have a coupon code that uh, they sent me for my audience. This is exclusive and you can find it down below. Since I'm planning to make three different birthday cards, I'm going to use three of the images from my stamp set. The elephant, the little pig and that bunny. So I'm going to stamp that with a permanent black ink just because I will be using water on top of it and I don't want this to be smudged. I'm going to let the ink dry and by the way I stamped everything on the textured side of my paper. So now I'm going to apply the color. There are many different ways you can apply color with your watercolor pencils. You can use your pencils to color the image, add the shadows and everything and then just blend everything out with your pencil. However, today I'm doing a different technique, so I'm going to apply a first layer. I apply it very smoothly, just the first layer of color. My tip is not sharpened, it is dull. And now I'm going to move the color, blend it out. And you can see here how this color performs. I can easily blend it out. It comes to be nice and smooth. And now to add my shadows, I'm going to directly pick up color from the tip of my darker pink and apply it exactly where I want to. I feel like I have more control when I'm using this technique. Now maybe I've said it before but I actually find it more satisfying using other mediums to color my images rather than my alcohol markers. With pencils or watercolor pencils I absolutely enjoy the process just because I don't have to rush before the ink dries to make sure that uh, the markers are going to blend nicely together. Here I take my time, I can always use water to move the color. And you can always build up color with this technique, just make sure that the first layer is completely dry and then go and add another layer on top of it. For the little flags, just because they are such small areas, I alternate yellows and greens. And just with a little bit of water, I'm blending it out to avoid those uh, pencil lines. For my adorable elephant I decided to go with shades of blue, so again I'm applying the first layer very lightly, I'm going to blend it out, have a nice smooth area 
And now with a darker blue, I'm going to add my shadows. It's a really easy technique. You don't have to be an expert in coloring to do that and you will always get lovely results. So I'm going to do the same thing for the whole elephant. And of course, you don't have to work in parts like I'm doing here. You can just color everything with the first layer, then uh, blend it out with water, add your shadows all together. It depends on how you like to work. For his party hat, I first went with light green, applied the color, blend it out with water, and now I'm adding the darker shadows with a darker green. And you can see how nicely it blends. I repeated the same technique to color the balloon of my little bunny and added some color on the flowers on his head. And now there are matching dies for this uh, stamp set, which I don't have, so I'm just doing my fuzzy cutting. I'm going to cut out all the images. As I cut out my images, I'm also leaving a white border, just like if I used the dies. Now it's time to turn all those lovely watercolored images into a card. For that, I am going to use the same design for all three of my cards, and you can see that the same design can look completely different. So here I'm going to run a circle die through my die cutting machine, and I used some uh, masking paper there. So I'm actually creating a mask, which I'm going to use for all three of my cards. I'm going to peel off the backing and apply the mask on top of my four and a quarter by five and a half paper. Now it's time to do the blending. Uh, I decided for this first card to use a combination of my Distress Oxides. This is a warm lipstick and I'm going to bring in some seedless preserves. And for applying my color, I used my blending brush just to make sure that everything is very subtle. And you can see here that I'm just using a paper towel to wipe off my ink from the brush and I'm going to use the same brush for another color. This time I'm going from the top towards the center and I will end up having a lovely blended area. I'm going to peel off my mask and place it somewhere safely since I will be using the same one for the next two cards. Now I have a lovely background where I can nest on top my little bunny. I cut out a couple of clouds using a very old die set that I had in my stash and I'm going to use a foam tape at the back. One of the clouds is um, completely flat. This one is going to pop, be popped on top of my card just to add dimension. And if you are wondering about this big roll of foam, this is by Arteza. And as always, you will find everything linked down below. The foam tape is uh, 36 yards, I believe, for less than $20. It is a great quality. It doesn't stick all over your fingers. You can easily cut it with your scissors and uh, peel off the backing. However, you cannot tear it with your hands. But doesn't really bother me. I find that the price is perfect for the quality. I stamped the sentiment with black ink at the bottom. And the sentiment also comes from the same stamp set. I inked up the edges of my card base to match the colors of uh, the main area and I'm just sticking on top my panel. So I have a lovely card ready to go. You can embellish it with some gems like I always like to do. And my card is ready. Here are some close-up photos and I find this image is absolutely adorable. This is a really lovely birthday stamp set. So for the second card, I'm going to repeat the same process. This time, however, I'm using a different color combination. And instead of uh, having an ombre blended effect from one color to the other, I'm going to go more randomly here. The two colors that I'm using are Spiced Marmalade and Mustard Seed. And I'm, in... and I'm still trying to get used to those brushes. These are completely new to me. I like how easy it is to blend the colors and how subtle the final effect is. However, you can see that if you want to build up color, you need to load your brush again and again. With those, you will never get harsh lines. So use those if you want a subtle look, but uh, you can use your good old blending tools if you want a more saturated look or if you don't want to spend as much time building up the color. 
For the sentiment, I did some white embossing on top of uh, black cardstock. I have uh, popped my elephant with foam tape at the back. And now there is a little uh, stamp set here that adds uh, confetti coming out of his nose. So I'm going to stamp that there and I'm going to color it in. With my glitter gel pens, these have a very fine tip so I can easily color inside and it adds some shine as well. Here is a close-up look on the finished card and I absolutely love how clean and simple these all came out but so colorful and bright. Moving on to the third birthday card for today, again I'm using the same mask but this time at the bottom I'm going to stick another piece of tape so that I can uh, create kind of a ground. Now for another color combination, this time I'm starting with tumbled glass, I'm going to cover up completely the whole area. And on top I'm going with a darker shadow of blue, which is peacock feathers. Love the smooth blending with those brushes. And now I'm going to peel off all the masking tapes. I'm using black ink to stamp the sentiment at the bottom. Again the sentiment comes from the same stamp set. And now to put my card together, I have used an old tie from my stash to cut out two uh, rows of grass, which I have stick one on top of the other with foam tape. So this strip of grass is kind of dimensional. I'm popping the pig on top, just in between those grasses. Again, I have a couple of those clouds that I used for the first card, which I'm going to stick there, just to add something more interesting on my little scene there. And in the latest release by my favorite things, they came up with a die set, which is uh, balloon numbers. So just to personalize my card even more, I cut out the number one. Since this card, along with the gift, is going to a baby girl that is turning one this month. I popped number one on an angle and at the bottom I'm going to stick the little string and I absolutely love how this looks as if the balloon is flying away and that uh, little pig is trying to catch it. And just because I cannot stay away from gems, I just spread around a couple of them. And here are some close-up photos on the last card for today. And here are all the three birthday cards that I made today using the same stamp set and the same card design. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Don't forget that down below you will find a coupon code to the Arteza online shop, as long as links to multiple online shops where you can find all the products that I used on this video. Don't forget to leave me a comment and like this video and also subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.